for today's webinar, Prof. Fata is also accompanied by Professor Dr. Chen Jun Chen, who is the Senior Director of Center for Applied Learning and Multimedia, Dr. Rahana Safawi, who is the Director of Center for Academic Development and Management, and Dr. Hamima Ujir, who is the Director of Academic Quality Assurance Division. They are also here today to help answer some of the questions you might have at the end of the session. Okay. So as a reminder for the participants, if you have any questions to ask, please post your questions in the Q&A tool in WebEx. Okay. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Ahmad Asarasid to begin his talk on shifting to the new normal in teaching, responsibilities of Unimas Academy. Silakan, Prof. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And good afternoon. And so I'll just continue with my uh, presentation with uh, all of you. I believe that uh, this is a hiccup eh, for all of us, a new norm. So I just I understand that I think uh, all this situation will be uh, <clears throat> temporary until uh, we have our own skill for all aspects. I think not only Zoom but also way back and so on, eh? other uh, type of communication. Can can see the keynote, eh? Hearing now? Uh, yes, we can see the keynote. Yeah. Oh, okay. But maybe you can full screen if possible. Okay, uh, correct. Nice. Okay, good. So I think, uh, thank you very much, uh, Terry, for uh, assisting uh, as a moderator for this uh, webinar. So uh, we can proceed with uh, my... Uh, uh, sharing with all the academician at the moment uh, uh, as you know that shifting to a new <clears throat> norm actually uh, everybody must uh, do now there's no exceptions eh? so and then uh, i'm talking about the responsibility of minimus academicians uh, here so uh, if you go to uh, uh, events before the uh, 18th of march I, I believe that all of you uh, will remember uh, 18 of months forever after this, yeah? in which that you like to do uh, before 18 March. For example, uh, you do an international conference, a convention, and so on. Eh? You love to do this, yeah? at this, uh, not only national level, but international, with a student, international. Uh, coming to Unimas as well, I think uh, we are going to international for conventions, uh, conference, and so on. Not only that, we are also like to uh, meet the community outside there uh, to see, to promote our uh, program, but we can't do that at the moment. Eh? So I think we need to adjust ourselves to this new scenario. Not only that, uh, we also uh, going to s imagine what kind of convocation we're going to have uh, but i think as we know that uh, this year there's no convocations uh, and then uh, this a moment of uh, all of our graduate is waiting for and also uh, we as academicians to see our student receiving their scroll in the stage but this year they are in history uh, we're not going to do that and probably uh, they are meeting on how we can uh, convey uh, to the student, uh, those who are already uh, are entitled for graduation ceremony this year, maybe uh, there will be a postponed. And uh, some of us like to do a teaching uh, uh, in hospital, uh, in a lecture room and so on. Uh, so we can't do it now. And sometimes we are thinking that doing the examination online will be difficult. Uh, in which that I think uh, previously what we do, we gather all the students in one place and one time to do an assessment. So I think uh, this is not going to happen for this year. So I think uh, we need to be uh, very flexible on our way of uh, doing uh, this new norm. <clears throat> okay, as we uh, mentioned, I think all of us, yeah, not only uh, academician by all aspects, uh, should uh, have this 21st century skill in which that our education system uh, whether whether in school or university should provide a better learning experience to our student uh, not only that the system should be flexible adaptable and accounts to respond to a change 
become a lifelong learning. Yeah. So I think, uh, as you know, that the first element uh, in the 21st century, as we uh, know, is learning and innovation skill. <clears throat> in which that uh, there are quite a number of the skill uh, in this uh, in learning and innovation skill that we must know. In which that we uh, normally uh, uh, tell the academician and our colleagues uh, with a five C. Yeah. So in COVID. You mentioned uh, you you know that three C yeah? don't uh, uh, don't go into a crowded yeah a confined space and don't have a close conversation to uh, other people sir. Yeah? So in the twenty first century, uh, there are another five C yeah? in which that uh, critical thinking in which uh, finding solutions to the problems yeah and how we can uh, solve the problem of the nation and even world at the moment yeah. So this is the skill that we need. Yeah. So universal need for any career, not only a medical and also other uh, discipline yeah, where we are teaching. <clears throat> Another C that uh, we are talking about is creativity. Uh, creativity is uh, thinking outside the box uh, where a person uh, of adaptation, uh, they will be lead to uh, innovations. Yeah. So another C that we are talking about is uh, collaborative, yeah, collaborations, yeah, in which that we are working with others, yeah, not only ourselves, but also others, not only in Unimas, but outside Unimas, not only in Malaysia, but outside Malaysia. And these are the skills that we need to have. Yeah? And then the key is the willingness, uh, how willing we are working with others, yeah? are we comfortable working, uh, working with our own, uh, then uh, with others. So I think the, the success of this. Uh, <clears throat> collaboration is actually willing, uh, willing to uh, work with others. Another aspect that uh, we, uh, another C is communications. Yeah? Communications uh, in, uh, previously we, we, we talk, uh, talking to each other. Not only that, I think with new norms, uh, we are WhatsApping, we are telegram uh, ping, uh, we also uh, Zooming, uh, Skyping and so on. Uh, this is a kind of communication is available at the moment. Yeah. So another aspect that uh, we need to uh, have in the 21st century skill, actually digital literacy, literacy skill, in which there are information literacy, media literacy, and technology uh, literacy. Information literacy means that understanding fact, figure, data in our context. Yeah. And then media literacy mean understanding the method, yeah, the method yeah, and outlet in which that information is published, yeah, whether the um, social media and so on, uh, ethical and so on, yeah, uh, with the journal and, and, and all these uh, method, yeah, media literacy. Another an aspect is technology literacy in which that understanding uh, the uh, machines uh, that make the information is possible. So this technology yeah, could be a few things that we need to understand. Yeah? This we need to have this skill. And the skill that uh, we're talking about in 21st century, actually career and life a skill in which that this we call also flip, yeah? flexible education. Right? We must have a flexibility. Uh, flexibility means that deviating uh, from plan as needed. As we know that I think now uh, we already plan uh, our academic, how we can deliver, how we uh, assess our student at the beginning of the semester, uh, uh, first semester and second semester, even in Tassesi, yeah? we already plan all this. And flexibility, a uh, skill that we should have in uh, flexible education, in which that uh, we should be able to deviate yeah, from the plan as a needed, for example, during COVID. So we need to be uh, flexible in how we deliver and assess our student. These are the skills that are needed in 21st century, yeah? because uh, the world is very destructive and uh, very volatile. Yeah? We need to make sure that we have this kind of uh, <clears throat> flexibility. Yeah? Another aspect, actually, leadership, in which that how we motivate or influence a team to compliance a goal, even though I think uh, at the moment uh, we we are uh, at, at 
at the uh, situation in which that everybody is uh, facing this pandemic and how can lead other to change so that the change can make we are survival uh, in this education as we know that some of the company uh, is uh, bankrupt uh, because of the covid even after a month of the covid uh, some of company already bankrupt so another aspect that we need to um, have actually the skill of uh, initiative in which that uh, starting uh, the project strategy and plan on one's own uh, where uh, their internal drive by ourselves yeah? is not forced by a dean not forced by our deputy dean and uh, the the vice chancellor uh, even i think uh, at the uh, ministry level we at our side i think we should have uh, started our project a strategic and uh, how to implement during this covid yeah 19. another aspect that skill uh, uh, in this uh, category actually productivity yeah productivity means that maintaining the efficiency in uh, age of distractions yeah? at the moment we are distracted with this covid 19. how we can maintain our productivity uh, in our delivering our uh, teaching learning and how we assess a student uh, how we do a research and how we provide a service to community uh, these productivities need to be maintained uh, and uh, be efficient even though they are distracted uh, uh, during our work at home uh, we are distracted a lot of things so how we can uh, maintain our productivity uh, and efficiency in this aspect yeah? another aspect that we are uh, should have actually the social skill and how we meeting our uh, community our colleagues and so on how we create a net networking uh, with others for mutual benefit i think at the moment how we can benefit uh, uh, our student uh, educations yeah, uh, in unimas and how we are uh, actually doing our research yeah all this aspect is social uh, uh, skill is very important to uh to have uh, so that we can have interactions uh, cross culture and uh, and social interaction in this aspect yeah? so next i think uh as we promised before the uh, covid 19 we try to provide a student with a campus experience when we close the campus uh, this opportunity is not uh, delivered to our student how we can do this yeah so I think we already come a few uh, suggestions to the Ministry of uh, Higher Education, how we can provide the campus experience later on a uh, stage of the student uh, when they're coming back to uh, uh, campus later on, yeah? So, and uh, these are the things that uh, we also promise students to provide the community experience uh, in all discipline and through the SULAM. So this is not possible through a contact uh with the community at the moment but i think we uh, do have a few other alternatives so that students still have this community experience yeah so co-curriculum experience also i think we have a problem of uh, getting uh, our student to have this uh, kind of experience yeah entrepreneurship experience yeah so half of the job is done by our staff huh? because the student already going back home huh? and the uh, activity of entrepreneur uh, experience but i think uh, dr fendi uh, i think your golden melon is very sweet yeah so i think uh, thanks for the uh, i mean delivering the melon uh, very sweet and uh, i think should be continued for a few more years yeah and this project and then we also um, uh, promising to the industry uh, and then our student to have this industry experience so that they are quite comfortable when they are coming back uh, to uh, the real world of job yeah in industry later on so not only that i think global experience uh, we not uh, have this opportunity in which that we send our student globally as well receiving a student from the overseas this is a pandemic uh, in which that disruptive our uh, plan uh, before this yeah so i think what we're going to do uh, after this is quite difficult yeah welfare experience also i think we uh, do uh, implement this to our own student young uh, brother the campus uh, with the uh, help of uh, tnca uh, tnc hepa yeah? and also the tbt uh, uh, dean of uh, halihua plaza uh, as we know that uh, we're not only 
uh, faced this outbreak uh, uh, this year, but I think a few more years ago. Uh, if you all uh, still remember uh, SAR, that also having the outbreak, uh, but it's not many countries affected. Yeah, uh, that happened in 2002 and 2004, in which only 26 countries affected, uh, and a total of 8,000 uh, cases of the positive uh, SAR. So it's uh, managed to be controlled uh, at that time. But I think in medical faculty during that time, I am the coordinator of orthopedic posting. I need to scrap my uh, I think uh, thinking how uh, we need to convert all the teaching in the hospital because at that time hospital is closed. Yeah. During this SAR outbreak, I think uh, if you look into uh, the few things that we learned from this previous outbreak. Uh, so what happened into the school and university uh, in the country that affected, I think mostly China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, and Canada and a part of other words. Uh, there are sudden closure of the school and university during this time, uh, which uh, left most of the teachers or lecturers unprepared. I think that happened to ours yeah? uh, during uh, 18th of March, in which that most of us not prepared to do this, even though we already implement this blended learning for the past five years, uh, Prof Chen, as mentioned, I think, uh, Prof Chen before, uh, we already uh, implemented the blended learning for the past five years. We are lucky we are prepared at least 70% of uh, courses on this aspect. Yeah? There's no clear guideline uh, on that day uh, during SARS and what to do and how to carry on teaching. That make a uh, situation difficult during that time. And we learned from this previous uh, outbreak, we must have a clear guideline. Yeah? The lecturer's student must develop the new skill using online learning. And then we should provide uh, uh, good infrastructures uh, and a facilitate the online learning. Uh, we already discussed about these infrastructures, uh, facilities in Unimas. Uh, we, we try to uh, improve uh, this situation. At the uh, national level, uh, KPT also already starting the brainstorming how we can improve our digital campus. Uh, soon we are going to have this uh, uh, plan uh, for our universities and also for the uh, university in Malaysia. <clears throat> and then uh, now, this day, uh, the COVID affecting almost 215 countries or area <clears throat> in the world. Uh, now almost four, four plus uh, billion cases and uh, 281,000 uh, deaths. Uh, that is quite a significant uh, destructive of uh, our uh, world, uh, not only in Unimas, but also in Malaysia and the part of the world. Uh, significantly, uh, these uh, events create uh, accelerated development of online education. And then they are also uh, using RI for Penzu technology in this uh, uh, overcoming the coronavirus disease outbreak, uh, some of us using cloud-based platform to do their work. And we use TD printing to print our uh, fish seals, I think, and also predicts using intelligent, yeah, artificial intelligence. And uh, we do a lot of internet of things uh, using some part of the RI for Penjuru during this outbreak. And we understand that uh, during this outbreak, I think we must have a more flexibility of way of teaching and learning. Yeah? And we must have uh, other alternative teaching delivery and also alternative assessment uh, for our teaching learning, not only uh, in Unimas, but also in the world. Eh? So everybody is moving on this aspect. So what are the norm, uh, the new norms eh, after COVID-19? Okay. So as you know that I think our meeting, uh, we try to make sure that uh, we must have social distancing. Yeah. Uh, previously, we can shake hands together. Uh, we can greet together, we can hug together, and so on. Eh? But I think uh, after this, the new norm, we cannot do that eh, anymore. And we encourage, I think, all of you uh, doing uh, online uh, meeting and so on. Eh? So I think a lot of us are already quite familiar with the Webex, uh, Zoom. Uh, previously, we don't know. We only know the Skype. Eh? We don't know what is uh, Zoom, what is Webex, uh, and so on. Yeah. So hopefully, I think, uh, after this, I think uh, within a month, I believe that all of us are already quite familiar with uh, uh, 
majority of the uh, online meeting uh, available to uh, all of use for for the teaching learning as well as uh, doing our management and uh, some of us i think still uh, communicating with the community uh, through a few webinar and also a uh, live facebook yeah zoom and so on i think a uh, correct i think uh, uh believe that we can do more of this yeah i i know that i think all of us already uh, master some of the uh, the technique that we try to communicate with the new norms yeah to reach our uh, community uh, to provide our service not only for our student but also the community yeah um, uh, around us uh, non Indonesia. Uh, previously we use uh, Joe Maso IPT now we use alternative using a face life uh. as you can see the a lot of beautiful uh, thing handsome uh, Dean uh, uh, during uh, their promotions of their program in the facebook live yeah everybody is learning yeah so i think congratulations for all the dean and also the uh, program coordinator uh, of i think uh, promoting the uh, program by uh, online uh, means yeah? uh, through the uh, face not only that i think a few more i think a dean beauty uh, i think a dean uh, giving the talk to the publics uh, to promote all this uh, program in unimas uh, congratulations for all of you uh. so um what is the university responsibility after uh, we uh, know that we are going to close our uh, university i cannot sleep i think uh, almost for two days yeah and i already involved uh, the uh, come also ppba to come up with the guideline eh? so that is clear for everyone to implement the online and distant learning eh? and uh, inform the citds to improve the infrastructures of the online learning i think i thanks to the come and also uh, ppba within uh, two days two nights eh? uh, even uh, one i think uh, rohana said even one month uh, one one night eh? there they, are, they work hard to uh, finish the guideline. I think congratulations for hard working of the, the two divisions. Not only that, the deans, uh, BG, uh, BGKA and also uh, uh, the deputy deans, uh, they are doing a great work on this, uh, come up with a clear guideline so that we already end up in Senate and being used by uh, the staff. Uh, and not only that, we come up with uh, staff training, alternative uh, online teaching and also uh, assessment. And we also provide uh, some support to a student uh, where we can improve our uh, uh, on uh, thing, uh, access to internet in the majority of our campus, uh, especially in the college. Yeah, so probably I think initially there will be hiccup. I think after this there will be a more when the uh, MCO is lift off, and then we going to full uh, support to our uh, online system to our student. Yeah. So uh, come also doing a lot of this webinar on face-to-face uh, -face teaching strategic to online and then uh, using a leave and then uh, we should not stop. I think uh, coffee talk, I think there are a lot. Yeah? And as you know that I think uh, online education uh, in which that we know that's synchronous learning and synchronous learning, there are advantages and disadvantages and the mood of this uh, learning through, I think, I believe all of you already um, are quite familiar with this uh, synchronous and asynchronous learning yeah so these are the <clears throat> online seminar series uh, we have uh, uh, pair especially for uh, i think pppa already uh, uh, planned this uh, during a, a month ago and then hopefully this will be continue until uh, june before we start our uh, new academic uh, continue of uh, reminding of uh, semester two uh, academic year. So I think as we know that uh, not only undergraduate but also uh, our uh, foundation pre yeah pre university uh, they are quite uh, accept the challenge that uh, continue uh, the teaching online fully yeah, uh, for about one month. So congratulations uh, to the Prayu uh, led by uh, Prof. Uh, media Dr. Muna 
and the team, uh, energetic team from Fryu, yeah. So I think you can see their uh, their online uh, final exam, uh, 100%. Uh, online uh, student attendance also uh, 92%. In which that they reach uh, the student even uh, the disadvantaged group, yeah, through uh, whatever um, uh, channels of communication. And then uh, we can see here is a lot of uh, a testimonial from a student, yeah. <clears throat> And then uh, movement control order. So what happened when this happened to uh, Unimas? So lecturer and student uh, separated by time and space. They are not in one place and one time. Uh. And then and we must understand that our student, there are a diversity of uh, background, especially and they are not only come from top 20, uh, middle 40, but majority of them are below 40. In which that I think where they are uh, when they are coming to their hometown, and they may have a difficulty to access to online. We need to understand this disadvantaged group when they are delivering our teaching learning. Yeah, so uh, remote learning uh, will uh, have the advantage, disadvantages and advantages. Yeah, so advantages are then uh, they provide the opportunity to maximize and manage uh, the student time of when they are would like to uh, study yeah? and there's no need to commute to campus or classes in which they previously uh, they need to come to the from their home to a campus and from one class to another class uh, that will be minimizing the uh, time yeah? and then they can uh, use the time appropriately for other purpose yeah students can learn at their own pace yeah so they can learn and repeat and so on yeah? And then some of uh, very fast students, they can you, uh, do it uh, very fast. Yeah? And also the benefit to the disabled uh, patients, uh, student in our universities. So they don't need to commute from one place to another. They can do it at home or uh, in their hostel. Yeah? So if they are, we, uh, they are allowed to uh, go, going back to the campus very soon. Yeah? And uh, but I think we must also remember by doing a remote learning uh, requirement of French equipment like computer, laptop, and so on, web camera, reliable internet connection. And not only that, technical issue related to malfunctioning devices. For example, I think just now uh, when we do a webinar, I suddenly uh, they're stuck. Uh, and then this is all as aspect we need to learn. Yeah? The student uh, isn't uh, savvy enough. Uh, to fix by themselves. They need an assistant yeah, on this aspect. I think we need to provide this kind of technical issue when they arrive. Yeah. So as you know that when we are doing a remote learning, feeling of loneliness, isolation, distraction, uh, proskination, long-term consequence and, and uh, because of diversity of our student, there will be issue of inequality and, and inconclusiveness of a student. So we need to make sure that uh, in our mind uh, when we do a remote learning for disadvantaged group. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I think some of our uh, staff, I think, uh, assist in psychological support. I think like uh, Dr. Ting and the Faculty of Medicine uh, in Inimas and also uh, uh, UG, yeah? Inimas Global assist their student international um, by uh, having a chat and also a communication. Yeah? And uh, some of our counselor provide uh, their uh, phone number, even yeah, if there are any problem. And also, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Amelia, uh, for their uh, uh, always a live uh, Facebook uh, uh, to uh, uh, not only in Imas, but also to other uh, community outside. Yeah. So um, now we're talking about the uh, lecture responsibility during this uh, new norms. Yeah? Uh, as lecturers, we must uh, provide or create a communication channels, uh, whether through email, WhatsApp, and telegrams, which one is convenient uh, to all of you, uh, and then also the student. And then uh, we must understand uh, student uh, readiness for online learning, uh, how they are ready, as you know that some of the students uh, have uh, no poor internet access, uh, no devices, no conducive learning environment where there are big family with a, a small room uh, and house. 
or even there are some of them in the interior part of this uh, world, uh, especially in Sabah and Sarawak, yeah, and part of uh, Kelantan as well is Paham. So uh, solution we try already uh, come up with the uh, few solution for this disadvantaged group. Hopefully the Majlis Keselamatan Negara uh, will um, give uh, approval so that we can uh, bring back uh, this advantage group to the campus so that they can uh, have a good equal and uh, inclusiveness uh, when we imply, uh, when we, we implement this online learning for a student with the disadvantaged group. And as the lecturer, I think uh, we make sure that uh, we are available at the designated time for the student to reach us. We are uh, whatever channels that you are uh, more convenient with a student. Uh, and then we make sure that we ensure the student uh, query or questions uh, and we respond within a specific uh, time frame. Yeah? So facilitate a self-directed learning, reduce student isolation, create environment for student engagement in learning. As we know that when you keep a student engaged in a meaningful learning, there is a less likely uh, that they are will bold and distracted and disruptive. Yeah? So I think hopefully, I think all of us can uh, do our own role on this aspect. When we are talking about cost design, we must employ a sound pedagogy principle with appropriate teaching strategy and carefully considerations of different uh, design decisions because it has an impact on the quality of instruction. So I think for this uh, also, we need to have a thoughtful of a cost plan change form to ensure all the uh, course learning outcome are tackled accordingly within allocated student learning time. I give example of faculty of economy and business already have a briefing on a course plan. I believe uh, some other faculty already doing this. Uh, I believe I think you can invite Prof Chen and the team uh, uh, from uh, CAM and as well as uh, PPPA to assist you all to understand uh, your uh, new uh, norm on teaching delivery and also I think how we can tackle uh, the CLO according to the allocated student learning time with the guideline uh, we given to all of you uh, already approved by Senate last month. So uh, in regard of learning resources, I think as we know that content is design, designed to support the self-learning and we must remember that I think uh, not all of us students at the moment, access to internet, uh, and then some of them are no internet. So we need to make sure that content need to be accessible to the student, including uh, the disadvantaged group using the variety of mod, uh, media and technology, as we these are the skills that are required in 21st century. If we can't do that, I think we may use other options like a printed material and post it to the student of that did not happen and then when we bring back all these students uh, to the campus and then portable storage devices in which that they are uh, have the pc or computer we can uh, send them a portable storage devices so that they can access the material and even i think if there are need okay if they cannot we cannot bring them uh, to uh, the campus we can uh, loan them a computer yeah this is very difficult i think the best solution would be bring this disadvantaged group of uh, student to the main campus. And not only that, we uh, try to uh, do an analysis at the uh, university as well as uh, in national level and how we can assist the student uh, don't have an internet access uh, and which that bandwidth is very low. Uh. So uh, this is in the planning. Hopefully within this week, I think at the uh, national level, uh, I already have a discussion with all the TNCAA and also the uh, DPT uh, DG uh, Dato Saleh on how we can improve the digital campus. Uh, uh, not only that, I think uh, we may consider uh, uh, giving some uh, aid to uh, the disadvantaged group, especially below 40, to access internet. And, and in regard of learning activity, uh, uh, we uh, recommend that uh, to make sure that disadvantaged group uh, included in our teaching learning. So uh, I will recommend you all to use synchronous learning. Yeah? Uh, if your uh, 
course I think uh, in which the student 100% uh, access the internet and also have the devices I, I encourage you also can use synchronous yeah so I think uh, but it's minimal yeah so uh, the best will be in synchronous learning at the moment until we are uh, be able to bring all disadvantaged group to the campus and not only that we need to focus our student interactions and facilitation of the learning uh, uh, to this uh, all the students needed and uh, we must understand that uh, we must also well us with various other tools uh, of uh, resources uh, available in uh, ellipse i think uh, thank you uh, prof chen and uh, Kam provide the compilation of the learning uh, video as well uh, the tool uh, is available uh, you all can access to the Kam e-learning unit and then there are uh, more than 200 uh, resources set by CAM and an online teaching guideline yeah so hopefully uh, not only that uh, we need to uh, have a time commitment to learn this tool and integrate appropriate uh, one to your course design ELIP is not a sole tool for you to conduct online uh, teaching and learning yeah? other uh, other method and tool uh, is also is good uh, if you can learn uh, this new skill and at the moment some of the faculty organized uh, with the uh, CAM and BPPA uh, ongoing uh, bite-sized blended learning session in every faculty and uh, e-learning community member at the each faculty uh, to play a significant role uh, to assist uh, these transitions hopefully after this there are more uh, this kind of uh, learning workshop uh, uh, organized by the all faculty and in Unimas yeah? so like a uh, faculty of economic and business and then in regard of learning assessment uh, we already uh, come up with the guideline for alternative assessment uh, endorsed by a senate uh, recently uh, last month uh, we hope that uh, replace face-to-face -face written exam with alternative assessment for this coming uh, reminding of semester two and if opt for an online written exam, ensure that students are familiar with the implementation method and measure taken to minimize cheating. Yeah, uh, we must also uh, believe in our student. Yeah? Uh, they are being honest. Yeah, and then our student must uh, play their own roles. Yeah, be honest because if they're cheating, they are not going to have uh, benefit of the knowledge that we are delivered to the student. Yeah and uh, flexibility uh, of the deadline uh, for assignment uh, we need to consider within uh, uh, the course itself uh, because uh, not all are uh, group access to internet and then we must uh, remember this disadvantaged group yeah so i think these are the possible i think you can do uh, for the assessment and then uh, for further i think you can discuss with your deputy uh, dean of pra uh, then also uh, PPPA, how we can implement this uh, alternative assessment to different group of a student, uh, whether it's in G1, G2 or group 1, which means that they have internet access and devices. Group 2, they are weak or no internet access, but they have a PC laptop. And uh, the last group is uh, they're non, uh, they don't have internet, they don't have devices. Yeah? so uh these are alternatives that you can consider and then uh, how to submit the assessment uh you need to discuss with your uh, deputy dean and also dean and how you implement uh respectively uh and then they must uh also uh, follow the guideline that we already uh, established uh, and then endorsed by senate recently last month Okay, uh, before we uh, think end, I think I still uh, believe that teaching is just like breathing. Yeah? It's no breathing, it's no life. So, no teachings, no life. Yeah. So, what happens, I think, if we bring uh, breathing every day? Yeah? So, we alive. If we're not breathing, so what we need to do? Yeah? In COVID cases where there are respiratory failure, so we need to force them yeah? uh, using a ventilator to make sure they're alive. So, uh, to make sure the teaching is alive or continue, we must uh, be continue our teaching. Yeah. So whatever is it by uh, voluntarily or by force. Yeah? There's nobody can stop teaching, because teaching is very important. 
we must develop a holistic lecturer education system, uh, regardless of the method of teaching and delivery, whether it's face-to-face -face blended learning, online learning, distant learning, and so on, that will be a support yeah, to our student, as well as lecturer, yeah, so that our present and future lectures become uh, more resilient yeah, to the crisis yeah, similar to COVID-19 pandemic, uh, if they happen in the future. I believe that all of us uh, here uh, can do this together, and we do this not only for the future graduate, but also future generation of Unimas lecturers. I think uh, that's all from me, I think, uh, Terry. So I, I give back to you. If there's any questions, remember, yeah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for the, for the talk. But now, now it's time for open for Q&A, and all the panels can also participate. I believe I think all of us already uh, well prepared there in this new <laughs> norms. Yeah, so uh, uh, I believe that uh, one, uh, almost two months uh, is good enough to increase all of uh, the skill that uh, required uh, from all of us uh, in uh, Unimas itself. I congratulate to all the academic, uh, so doing their own part. Yeah. Any questions uh, so far? Very good. No question, that mean everybody understand. Okay, so, we have uh, one everybody question. Is... Yeah, okay. Professor, we have one question from okay. Mr. Sova. Who will provide okay. us the data about student internet and equipment access? When can we have the info? Okay. So Who thank you, provide... um, Prof. Sova. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Prof. Sova. At the moment, I already directed all the dean. Eh? Uh, to do a survey to all students. Uh, no single student is left during the interview eh, uh, to provide this survey so that we have a very definite number of students, how many they are in the category uh, one, two, and three just now. So hopefully by this week, we have uh, all the number with me and Prof Chen and the team uh, with PPA was looking into the the number and uh, make sure they are tally with uh, our active student. So uh, inshallah, I think uh, I think at the faculty level, all of the dean and deputy dean uh, already done their tasks. I think hopefully by end of this week, we already have uh, that all number because uh, the dean uh, not only using uh, a WhatsApp uh, message and so on, even I think uh, using a, a letter to the student where they are not able to reach the student to make sure whether they have a problem which category they are in so hopefully by uh, end of this week we have a uh, uh, exact and accurate uh, number of uh, students in different category so by having that we can plan uh, uh, very good on our planning uh, for our uh, teaching learning later on yeah hopefully that i'm answering the question if prof chen if you want to add in uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, all right, uh, just once on a little bit on that. Uh, so, as mentioned by uh, Prof. Hatta, uh, we hope that all the things uh, can actually help to get all the data uh, as soon as possible. Okay, because it's actually very important. We realize that all academics, we actually need those data as well. We need to know who actually among our students you know, do not have the access either to internet, to computer, or even to both of them, because I think that will actually affect the way we design our course. What are the things that we need to prepare in advance? Do we actually need to prepare printed materials? Do we actually need to save everything into the uh, the USB flash drive so that we can post to them? I mean, the faculty to post to them. So we need to do all this preparation. And also we need to quickly alert the faculty if we think that uh, our course cannot actually be delivered that way. There is no way for our course to be delivered to printed material, for instance. So we need to really quickly alert our faculty about this thing yeah, so that further action can be taken up. Yeah? 
So I hope that uh, all faculty, uh, deans particularly, can actually provide all those information, you know, cascade down it to our uh, lecturers because we need to know. And at the same time, lecturers, you also can quickly feedback the faculty if you found that, you know, your course have difficulty either in terms of your delivery or in terms of your assessment, you know, uh, 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 especially if you are using the alternative mode. You know, alternative mode here basically means that you have to use, like, for instance, the printed mode, or maybe you just can provide some uh, uh, soft copy material here, yeah? or everything set in the US. For instance, you know? so these are some of the things that uh, I think uh, just a little bit add on to what uh, Prof. Hatta had mentioned just now. Yeah, Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. For answering the question okay so we have another we have another question from okay how good is the chance to bring our students back especially those who are in the g3 Let me ask, repeat the question. How good is the chance to bring our students back, especially those who are in the G3? Oh, I think Professor having anything to do with him. Oh, okay. I think he's back now. Uh, Prof. Chen, Dr. Hamima, or Dr. Rahana, yeah. is there a way that you can help answer this question? Where is Prof. Atta? <laughs> I think he's having a uh, line, line problem right now. Sometimes. I see. Okay. Can, yeah, can, can we reserve this, uh, this question to Prof. Atta? I think uh, he should be the right person to answer this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll get back to this question. Okay. So when they come back, that question is there when the is back. Okay, the next question is uh is there okay not tanya so I'll so kenapa untuk plane change to PTG mereka tidak keluarkan step by step video or PDF cara untuk kita to online dan activity. And this one is about PTG. How to switch question uh, how to the cost plan change step by step method to video or PDF. Is there, is there a guideline for that? For the lectures to refer to when they do the PTG? This one is um, QDA, can I answer? Uh, yeah, yeah. We don't have the uh, video for the guidelines step by step, but uh, PPA already come out the PowerPoint uh, uh, about the guideline uh, step by step. Actually, we already uh, passed uh, the the PowerPoint version to all the uh, deputy dean. So meaning that you can refer to the uh, to your deputy dean of the faculty. To refer for the whole point version of the guideline. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so next question. Uh, is it ethical from um, Dr. Freddy? Is it ethical to help online video conference for those students who can but just using asynchronous for those who don't have time, who don't who have who do not have good internet access? Is it fair? Basically, I think it's about fairness. Uh, is it fair to conduct synchronous video conference for those students who can? And then for those students who cannot, uh, we will talk to the um, Maybe I can respond a little bit on this. Yeah? Uh, back to the lecturers themselves. Uh, is it that what you have delivered over the live class is actually similar to what you actually delivered in the uh, so-called a recorded version so if you think that it is similar maybe it is similar right so but if you think that during the live class you actually ask the students to do other activities you know during that live class um that's mean it is not similar so means that your students may have actually lost out some activities during that process you know uh during your live class process yeah so uh so I, I think I pass it back to the lecturers to consider this. Yeah? 
we know that uh, when we have uh, different groups of students with different um, uh, different, uh, I would say, uh, uh, different affordances, yeah? some of them may have good access, good computer, so that one is one group. But we also have a, a group of students who maybe have computer but access not good. Okay? And also we have another group of students who do not have both of them. You know? So uh, basically, if you have those kind of students in your, in your class with the, these three different groups, yeah, basically you have to come up with three different designs. You definitely cannot come with everything the same because they are not the same right from the beginning. The way we deliver will not be the same, okay? But we try to minimize the differences. I think this is what we can do at this moment. Try to minimize the differences. Yeah, that the thing that we the uh, group number one, we try to minimize that differences. To say that we want to keep everything the same, that is not possible, okay? So I, I guess that, that should be the solution at the moment. So I think Prof Hatta is back. <laughs> uh, good to yeah. see him back. Welcome back <laughs> Maybe we should ask <laughs> the questions yeah. back to him. You so, know, yeah. question uh, uh, Okay, this one. Okay, there was, there was. Thank you for answering the question from Dr. Freddy. Okay, now we go back to the previous question. Okay. Uh, how good is the chance to bring our students back, especially those who are in the G three? Okay, uh, how good? Uh, I cannot say uh, 100%, but I think uh, I would say probably 60%, uh, the chance to bring back this G30. Uh, uh, but I think uh, uh, it still depends on MKN and then the situation. And uh, we must follow the SOP. Yeah? So if we bring back this uh, student, I think uh, as, as mentioned recently, uh, the government and MKN already approved that we can bring uh, back our uh, our postgraduate student uh, for their uh, recess uh, recently, uh, and also uh, we also in the process of uh, preparing uh, the draft to the MKN so that I think uh, this uh, disadvantaged group of student can uh, be bring back to uh, the uh, campus uh, so that we may not have. Uh, much problem uh, on the issue how we deliver the te teaching learning for this uh, student. I cannot say that hundred percent, but I think probably is slightly than fifty percent. Yeah, it's on MKN. So can I add on a little bit practice about that? So basically, based on uh, what uh, the response from Prophata, what we need to do is basically we need to plan for both scenario here. Yeah? Scenario one is basically the students are not returning. I mean, the disadvantaged group cannot come back. So that is the first scenario that we need to work on. And of course, the second scenario, if they are back, you know, what can we do? So we need to plan for both, yeah? not just one, yeah? because there is no confirmation from MKN as mentioned by Prof. Hatta just now, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's still because I think our student actually is scattered eh, around the Malaysia. Uh, if they're in Sarawak, probably it's quite easier. When they are in Semenanjung, they're also in Sabah. Eh? So I think there are a lot of uh, issue of, uh, I think, different state, they have a different, uh, especially in Sabah. I think recently uh, we want to send our student back for their high raya, they have a problem. So this uh, possible, I think, problem we can face in the future when we bring back our student back to the campus. So if we not prepare the scenario number We can while waiting for him to return, we will move on to another question. Okay. Next question is oh okay. Okay, so one person on postgraduate. Okay, by Rona Paul. Okay. From Lorna Four, how can postgraduate students access to online journal from Kais okay, or Pitari? 
is because some journeys can only be accessed inside Unimas campus, but not outside. So I think this one we have to ask from the librarian. I wonder if we can help. So Tariq, which question is that? I, I cannot. Because Lorna. By Lorna. Lorna Ko. 2.53 p.m. in the Q&A list. Uh, can I answer for that? Okay, okay. All right. uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you can log in to Kai's website uh, using your ID staff ID number. Uh, then uh, you can access all the journal inside inside the uh, inside the uh, Kai's uh, website. Okay. So actually, it's possible to access the journal um, by, by by entering your. ID. Sorry for interrupting you, Terry. Uh, because your line is very lagging, <laughs> we can't actually hear you. I will just read our questions, right? I will read out the questions and we try okay. to uh, respond. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I think I will go one by one. Uh, we have actually answered Dr. Soba's questions. Uh, we have also gone through, uh, um, sorry, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Linda, we have done that part. Uh, I'm referring to the Q&A now. And then we also have answered uh, Dr. Freddy's questions. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So, and then we have uh, also one question from Dr. Bong here. I suggest to provide a proper tool for conducting online teaching like microphone and video camera. Currently, my laptop quality is not very good. Um, <laughs> okay, how to respond to this one? <laughs> uh, basically, the, uh, the decisions that we have at the moment, uh, if the faculty wants to help, then you go ahead. Lah, okay, but otherwise, I think at the university level, uh, what we think as, uh, at this moment is that uh, lecturers uh, can actually look for their own uh, peripherals that uh, if they they require to have like a microphone or webcam uh, maybe at this moment uh, it's good for the lecturers to actually get for their own yeah, instead of relying on the universities yeah so please do all the necessary to support all your teaching and learning at this moment yeah so that that would be the, the answer to that question yeah all right uh if uh, you're not satisfied or anything you still can continue uh, putting up your questions yeah because uh, uh that's the only way to know your feedback as well all right, and then the next question is, what I mean in one class, there are students have good internet access, but not for some. Can we still do online face-to-face -face for those who can and engage through face-to-face -face for the others? All right, uh, Dr. Rohana, you want to, to respond to this? Oh, is this like Dr. Rohana? Dr. Rohana? Do you want to respond to these questions for Dr. Freddy? Uh, Freddy? Better uh, you, bro. <laughs> you <laughs> design part, right? <laughs> Maybe you can give your view first. Okay. Um, uh, for me, it's better we do a synchronous uh, uh, teaching instead of face-to-face -face, uh, learning because uh, some of the students uh, cannot uh, cannot access uh, the internet. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and so, so when you actually decide to go for live class, uh, Besides looking at the diversity of your students, it is also very important to know that, you know, when you actually make the decision, it incur cost to your to your students. Yeah? So uh, in the recent uh, sharing from a UTM speaker, I share this again now because I think this is very significant. When they actually have this Webex live class for one hour, uh, the cost for the student is actually 17 ringgit uh, on their prepaid mobile plan. So means that 70 ringgit is actually a lot for them, you know, I mean, for if they are using that kind of plan, yeah. So in whatever decisions that you make for your students, uh, it is important also to put that into your consideration. So if you think your live class is not really so necessary and actually can be replaced by the 
uh, synch asynchronous method like the mentioned by uh, TNCAA, asynchronous. So please do so. Yeah? That I think that is my advice now. Maybe TNCAA want to add on a little bit on that as soon as he is back. <laughs> okay. Terry, what is the question just now? I, I stopped Terry from talking because <laughs> Terry's okay. mind is very lagging. <laughs> okay. All right. So the question okay. is uh, by uh, Dr. Freddy saying that uh, if in the class there are students have good internet access, but mm -hmm. others, yeah. So can we still do online face to face for those who can and engage through face to uh, non face to face for the others? Means that there are two different kind of two different implementations, yeah. So just now, Dr. Rahana was saying that you know. Uh, uh, yeah, better go for the asynchronous. Lah. So I, I actually support that by saying that it actually incur cost if you go for live class. So if you think your live class and your uh, and your recorded class is actually no difference. Yeah? So why not just give the recorded version? Yeah? That, that is what my response is lah, because the, the cost is one of the consideration. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, we try to uh, minimize the impact on financial to the student in which that I think the difference between the synchronized and uh, in synchronized, especially in video, in which that you can tap the video and then send a student, in which uh, the difference would be, I think student cannot uh, uh, ask the question immediately, but they can also can uh, post a question uh, through a website, uh, <clears throat> through the WhatsApp or other channels that are convenient with all of you, <clears throat> so that they are less costly to the student and then uh, the equality is there. Fairness to other student is not uh, having a problem here, because I think some student they can access through their uh, parents. Uh, Wi-Fi is uh, free for them, but some uh, student they need to purchase that kind of uh, bin wage yeah, to access to synchronize. Yeah, probably I think if uh, you do uh, asynchronize uh, with the, the 50 ringgit of uh, money they can spend for about one month but if you implement that i think uh, uh with synchronize and they only for about one or two hours one day the hub is the hard so i think to be fair with the student uh try to uh do the basics one where everybody is uh, the cost effective like, way how we deliver uh, our material right? learning material to the student yeah so we need to uh, look uh, into the other aspect, yeah, cost effective way of we deliver. Macam juga lah, kat medical, we must also think that doesn't mean that very expensive uh, tool of investigation is uh, better than a cheap one. So I think we need to uh, see the outcome, uh, learning outcome behind that. I think <clears throat> that is most important. Uh, whether the student receive the material and then they can ask a question and then you can uh, feedback the, the student uh, uh, at the uh, adequate or the appropriate time frame uh, and the feedback so that student can uh, learn from that. Yeah, that is uh, from me. Lah. Thank you, Kata. I think yeah. we we'll move on to the next question. Uh. Uh, okay. The next question, question comes from uh, Dr. B. C. Lim uh, who actually asked, will postgraduate students be allowed to come back to campus? Come back, come back, yeah, come back, return to the campus? postgraduate students yeah so as i mentioned uh, earlier i think student uh, need to do a lab in order to uh, do uh, progress in your study especially for the uh, research uh, master by research uh, professor Houdin and the team of cgs also the team need to uh, coordinate how uh, the student is coming back because as mentioned by the uh, announcement uh, uh, at least, I think, dalam 60, yeah, 60 uh, student per uh, UA. So we try to minimize eh, on this number and then uh, plan accordingly and give priority to uh, those who really need first. And once they are finished, and then we can ask them to uh, go online and then uh, subsequently, uh, there are new student is coming. Uh, so that we try to uh, minimize the number coming to the uh, university and then they must follow the SOP. That is most important. At the moment, uh, they are no, uh, uh, not yet. I think KPT is not yet uh, give detail of SOP. One we receive within this week, 
and then we can easily implement uh, what is been uh, allowed uh, by the MKN uh, in regard of the postgraduate student. So the faculty and then you know still be informed accordingly to the lecturers uh, after we receive the detail of SOP from uh, KPT as well as uh, MKN. Eh? So uh, from that, I think kita akan uh, laksanakan when we re receive the uh, the detail SOP. Yeah, we need to uh, comply eh, with. Hopefully, I answering uh, Dr. Lim uh, questions on the aspect. Uh, so we will uh, inform the lecturers and faculty when we receive the a detailed SOP yeah, because I think they are depend on the SOP. Eh? So if you not implement uh, through the SOP, uh, we uh, have, may have a problems later on. Okay. So Prof. Chen, any questions from the audience? Hello. Okay. Hello. Anybody? Yes, we are here. Okay. <laughs> I think I, I think this Adam is video so that so that it is smoother. Is Prophet still wanna proceed with the QA? So, okay, let's we go to another question. Um, we have one question from Christopher Peruma. Okay, I would like to ask about how to proceed with Sulam. Any suggestion if E Sulam doesn't fit the post yellow? Thanks. This one is about Sulam. How do we conduct okay. uh, Sulam? And I think uh, uh, Puan Azia and also Rohana, can, can you assist on this? I think there are new guidelines. Eh? Uh, if Azia is around, you can also give uh, any. We, we already have the guideline eh, on the Sulam. Uh, can I answer, uh, Prof? Sure, yeah, please. Okay, we already discussed this matter. If possible, we change from uh, so the, the, the traditional Sulam to E Sulam. And if the E Sulam is, uh, doesn't fit the cost sale, or, um, uh, you can ask uh, PPBA to help, uh, to help you. There is no guideline yet, uh, Prof, but we actually uh, changed the criteria uh, during the Senate last time. Okay. So probably I think that uh, new change of criteria can be communicated to the faculty as well as the person in charge of the Sulam in the faculty level, eh? Dr. Rahana. Okay. So yes. I think you can also ask uh, uh, Puan Noazia and also Dr. Rahana, BPPA, on this matter, Prof. Thomas. Any more questions, Harry? Uh, okay. Prof. Chen? All right. Okay, we have another question. The one Sophia. Can we speed up the process of purchasing ebook for our teaching and learning? For our library. Okay. Can we speed up the process of purchasing ebook by our library? I think uh, this one, uh, Puan Corina need to answer this, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we will convey that uh, uh, questions to uh, appropriate uh, Corina and also Bendahari lah on that aspect. I think inshallah, I think we try the best to assist, facilitate because uh, uh, it is under jurisdiction of uh, Puan uh, ni, uh, Corina. Kita akan uh, maklumkan kepada Puan Corina on the aspects lah. Uh, Polly, I think, uh, can you give the ebooks, appropriate ebooks, so that we can uh, convey the information to Puan Karina, which ebook they are specifically uh, mentioned eh, for the uh, teaching learning? Thank you. Uh, yes, another question. Another question from Dr. Ashley. Do postgraduate students need to pay for this semester? We were told that they can extend later, but when they extend, do they need to pay? Okay, uh, in regard of the fee and extension of the uh, semester by postgraduate student, uh, inshallah, I think we will come up with a working paper to the Senate uh, on June. So this paper will be uh, benchmarking few other UA 
uh, in which that uh, we uh, consider uh, if the student want to do an extensions and if they want to continue in the following semester kita akan consider not to have uh, additional fee lah for them but i think is pending to senate approval i think inshallah i think june ni kita akan buat keputusan on the fee for the postgraduate whether they are uh, extend or uh, and then what happened to the fee for the next semester so kita akan uh, bincang di uh, masyarakat senate uh, 4 june ni inshallah after 4 4th of June, kita akan ada jawapan eh, untuk pertanyaan tersebut. Okay, any other? Okay, another question from, uh, from Madam Sharifah Fazida Wati. Uh, the attendance of students, this is about the students' attendance, reporting students' attendance. If we still okay. apply three times of absentee from class, will it, will if students unable to join in our session three times, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, uh, do we bar them from exam? Do we still apply that? Uh, you mean the the care, is it? We care? Uh, no, uh, no the, for students' attendance. For uh, student attendance uh, online. Online, is it? Yeah, if they miss three sessions for classes, uh, will they be barred from exam? Uh, which one? Okay. For undergrad or postgraduate? Uh, for, uh, I think it's for undergraduate. I get where yes. if they are not attending, uh, miss they miss three online sessions teaching and the online teaching. Oh. They miss three okay. times. Okay. Miss five times. Okay. At the moment, uh, what we do actually, uh, even the current scenario, uh, those who are not uh, complete the uh, the attendant more than eighty percent or certain uh, faculty ninety percent like medical uh <clears throat> we uh, still can proceed with the exam but the result is uh pending uh, based on the evidence whether they have valid reasons why they're not attending the classes so because we don't want to uh uh create the situation in which i think uh, at the moment everybody is facing the pandemic and then some of the student is not able to uh log in uh, internet i think uh sometime give example myself just now i think a uh, five time uh, can log in web backs yeah so we don't want that uh, to be happen to a student in which they are they try the best but the situation yeah is genuine situation in which that student uh, is not recorded attending the classes so the most important actually um, we need to communicate uh, with the student with uh, whatever i think uh, channel that we can do so that uh, why they're not attending the classes yeah or uh, whether they are received for example if for example that we need to post the material we need to make sure they are receiving the material so that we understand they are in the process of uh, learning yeah through the material that we post or even we are uh, uh, also uh, considering uh, not to bar for uh, getting uh, the exam eh, if they are not attending uh, the the mark because of the situation that we know uh, not all students access the internet and uh, the communication ataupun uh, we at, as lecturer lecture try the best lah, to reach the student why they are not attending the classes for for this period of time uh, we try to make sure that uh, we're not going to bar all the students if they are not attending the classes but we may not release the exam yeah so if they can provide or delay giving the reason why they are not attending the class i think that is still acceptable during this uh, unusual uh, new norms yeah? uh, until we are resumed to our normal activities yeah so i believe by answering the question i think to be fair with the student and uh, in these situations so uh, we are not going to bar uh, any student at the moment, but we allow them to sit for the exam. I think whatever exam they are, uh, you all using, uh, the native assessment or whatever, so they can sit for that specific exam, but the result pending based on a good justification from student why they're not attending the class or not receiving uh, the uh, method of a teaching. 
as we know that I think to be flexible at the moment eh? because uh, this situation is not normal eh? it is abnormal yeah is uh, a situation that everybody is uh, not willing to uh, face anymore in the future yeah so I hope that answering the question I think uh, we we try to make sure that uh, this kind of uh, scenario we presented to a Senate eh? uh, so that we're not going to bar the student based on the attendance yeah? for this period of time, to be fair with uh, all uh, different diversity of our student at the moment, whether they are disadvantaged group or the advantaged group. Yeah. So we bring the, the Senate for investment. So even though they are very clear in our regulations, but I think we need to consider this, uh, uh, I think, uh, situations, uh, the abnormal situation. Uh, any more questions? Okay, I will go through the questions after the previous questions. Okay, uh, so we have one question from Dr. Salmino. If we have, to, if we plan to conduct synchronous lecture, but suddenly the line is like what we are having right now, sometimes we break up. We did, we did, and then we did feel in the PPG course plan that we are using synchronous, but end up it is easier to do the asynchronous. Then will it affect the PPG? So I think what question is uh, about, okay, we plan to do synchronous lecture, but suddenly due to that's a technical difficulty, suddenly our line is not stable on that day. We, we but then we already, uh, endorse, I mean, we already forward our PTG plan in VA level or that. Can we go back to from change to from synchronous to asynchronous, even though we already written what we plan to do in the PTG? Is it possible to uh, change? Uh, yeah, Dr. Rohana can comment first. Dr. Rohana, can you comment first? And after that, I, I give her. Okay, the percentage of PPG is not affected, uh, but it's still online actually. But uh, before we do uh, this one, we need to consider earlier whether we want to do the synchronous or a synchronous uh, or uh, a synchronous learning. But if this happened, uh, uh, we still uh, uh, can do the synchronous because it is still uh, online uh, uh, teaching and learning. I, I do agree with uh, what is uh, Dr. Rohana mentions. Uh, the uh, synchronize, if uh, that happened, for example, I think today we have a problem of the connection. Uh, and, uh, even supplement with asynchronous, for example, that uh, this is an alternative. Yeah? So even though you mentioned, but I think uh, the, the problem is not uh, a plan. Yeah? So because situation even the internet will be uh, fluctuating. Eh? So uh, you can uh, deliver through asynchronous. Eh? But I think uh, asynchronous actually are uh, bonus plus to the student as well as lecturers. Eh? So, but I think uh, you must also the best consider, as I mentioned earlier in my slide, I think uh, choose asynchronous, I think method of delivering your your method, I think, uh, synchronous will be in the supplementary ataupun bonus eh, to those students. Yeah? Uh, I think uh, if you can do that, so that would be a, a good option. So that when you're presenting to uh, Senate, better you choose it's synchronous. But if you want to implement the synchronous, that is uh, additional ataupun supplement, eh, a bonus to the student. Yeah? Uh, I, I think that that should be the way so that uh, if you have the bonus side synchronous on your delivering of method, that will be uh, is a good for the student. They have multiple uh, a way of uh, receiving the uh, uh, a method of uh, uh, teaching and uh, learning. Uh, not be synchronous, but also synchronous. But I think uh, when you're presenting, it's better use as asynchronous because. Uh, that is uh, the minimum standard, yeah. So if you use uh, synchronous, that is a uh, bonus to student. I believe that should be uh, the way. I think Prof Chen, if you have any uh, uh, input on this, the questions. Yeah, I'm back in. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, 
uh, well, talking about that, uh, personally, I think that uh, template given by PPPA is a guide for us, all right? But uh, in the case of like uh, emergency, like what uh, uh, the questions asked just now, means that certainly during that time, uh, you actually cannot implement that kind of a delivery. I think uh, as an educator, what is important is we need to actually adjust ourselves accordingly. Um, not we have written in the, uh, and it actually restricts our the NCAA just now. Yeah, we have one part talking about learning and innovation skills to be innovative. Yeah. So uh, just imagine that during that process, uh, you have students actually WhatsApp you and told you that, you know, I have this problem and this problem, which actually they do not face the problem initially at the beginning, you know, so means that you also have to adjust accordingly based on the needs of the students who actually WhatsApp you, means that your course design need to change according to the needs of the students as well, we are looking at the situation. So uh, in a case where, you know, you do not have a good access to conduct your life, you need to change your asynchronous, then you actually need to change it uh, uh, straight away, you know, without waiting for the Kalulusan or approval from PPPA or whoever, you know, before you can actually proceed. I think uh, that that should be our mentality at this moment because we know that, you know, we have uh, groups of students with different needs, uh, different, uh, uh, yeah, diverse, uh, diversity of students as well. NCAA just now, yeah, which means that we need to be accommodative and we need to adjust ourselves accordingly. At the same time, we as the educator, we have to ensure that the quality has to be maintained. Uh, I think that's a little bit input from me. Thank you, Prof. Chen. Yeah, any any more questions, Terry? Okay. 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 Oh, there's one more from Edwin. Edwin. I think this will be the last Q&A for the last question. Since we reached 3.30. Okay. There might, okay, there might be one. We go for one more question. There might be a number of excuses from our students national and international for not submitting the assessment attending the exam etc is there any guideline on how we are going to verify the valid excuses and whose responsibility that is who should be in charge of um, to verify whether the students if the excuses from the students or uh, what they are unable to attend the exam submitting the assessment on time um, how are we supposed to go about that? How do we handle that situation? Is there any advice that we can follow? Okay. Uh, in regard of that question, who are responsibility, whether they are student need to attend or not attend, I think whether they are student uh, truly attend or not uh, truly attend, the most important aspect actually whether the student receive the material of uh, uh, learning or not that is more important. I think that's why uh, lecturer responsibility to make sure they are communicated with the student. Uh, whether they are rich uh, to the student, actually a responsibility of lecturer itself to make sure that student, why they are not attending, why they are not receiving the, the material. Uh, so if they are not receiving the material and then uh, the process of teaching learning is not happen. So how are we going to assess if there's no uh, teaching learning uh, happen? So the most important, I think, uh, within these seven weeks uh, when we are starting our, uh, our uh, reminding of second semester, uh, we make sure that I think every, every session of this uh, uh, teaching learning, uh, we need to recommend I think how many students are attending or receiving uh, your teaching learning materials. Uh, and then from that, I think uh, if if they are not receiving any of the material, we uh, how we expecting they are uh, go through the learning process. If they not go through the learning process, how are you going to assess them? Whether the, because assessment principle actually you want to know how much the student receive 
the knowledge that we are giving to them. If we're not giving them uh, knowledge or deliver the uh, the teaching itself, I think uh, what the purpose of assessing them? Uh, if we not deliver the courses and then student, uh, okay, brilliant student can do their self-study, uh, they can even, I think, answer the questions. But I think if they answer the questions uh, and then uh, whatever I think the assessment you give, that means they are achieve the learning outcome itself. The most important is learning outcome that students receive yeah, uh, through the process of teaching learning. yeah. So that is uh, flexibility, I think, uh, on online learning itself, in which that student <coughs> attendance is flexible at the moment. If, for example, they can uh, score very high on, <coughs> on the exam, which means that they are, have a strategic how to learn. Uh, through the process, yeah, not only I think through the lecturers itself, but also others, yeah, so resources that are available to them. <clears throat> As we know that I think all the 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 student that we receiving in Unimas, <coughs> there are a diversity in the background. Some of them they are resourceful, yeah, and so with their uh, access to the 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 learning uh, material, some of them are not. So I think this. I think uh, we are more concerned on this advantage group, yeah? How we can deliver the material to them, how we can uh, make sure they are receiving the material. That is uh, all of us uh, as lecturers, our responsibility uh, to uh, deliver that material uh, regardless, yeah? So uh, what is the best way? Okay, if we can bring the student back to the university, that is the best solution where we no need to print uh, the problems. I think as you know that, uh, verification of the attendant, okay, as we know, uh, is a very uh, difficult moment at the moment. Uh, previously, it's quite straightforward if you're not attending the lectures. So, uh, we need to get the very clear uh, evidence. For example, they are six, you know, they, they, they need to bring the MC and so on. Yeah? At the moment, I think uh, the the few things that we need to uh, consider not only the valid uh, medical certificate but also valid uh, support yeah for example the internet access is not good and then probably i think cicds will look into this aspect and assist us to make decisions uh, why they are not receiving uh, the material whether uh, they are in the poor regions but if we can bring the student in the campus okay disadvantaged group in which they are uh, poor or internet access, I think uh, then uh, this issue is not uh, going to face by uh, our future uh, implementation of uh, teaching and assessment. So I believe that all of us uh, must uh, take this responsibility to make sure that uh, the, uh, the teaching is delivered to uh, the student accordingly uh, through all kind of communications. I think if we are truly uh, lecturers, we try to reach uh, wherever our student uh, and then uh, what what happened to them yeah why they're not attending the class yeah so if uh, all the student can assess through uh, the communication uh, there uh, we are uh, we 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 choose to choose to uh, communicate with student so whether through uh, internet uh, whether through the email and so on yeah so before uh, we implement the assessment i think we make sure that uh, the student, I think, the attendance, I think, how how, how many they are participant in the teaching learning. So from that, I think there is evident to say that we are monitoring the process of teaching learning itself. So as a lecturer, I think uh, all of us are responsible to make sure that uh, the student uh, are involved in teaching learning. Yeah? So if, for example, there are certain, I think, probably a small percentage of student, whatever you do, there will be in a, a small percentage of student will not bother on the teaching learning yeah this i think uh, the time that we need to uh, work together with the student as well as lecturers uh, so that teaching learning is never stopped yeah so teaching always uh, continue yeah just like breathing yeah so breathing is very important if no teaching no life yeah so i believe that uh, all of the lectures and uh, faculty <coughs> uh, even the university yeah together how we can uh, minimize the problem of this not attending to the 
uh, material uh, uh, teaching uh, learning uh, uh, sessions that we conduct. I hope answering that question, I think uh, this, uh, all of us uh, as academicians should uh, take the responsibility uh, to make sure that student, all of student, we try to put a knowledge and skill to them, yeah, so they receive whatever I think we are promised uh, in the beginning uh, as a learning outcome yeah, of the course itself. Terry, any more questions? Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Hamima would like to say something, say some point for us. Yes, Dr. Hamima. Okay. Dr. Hamima, please. Uh, okay, Assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, salam Ramadan. Okay, uh, I hope you all, all of you are in the pink of health. Okay, um, uh, just to share with you uh, that uh, MQA and all professional bodies have come up with the guidelines which serves as an advisory to all IPT eh, in planning temporary actions and recovery measures on the current academic systems which are affected by the implementations of uh, uh, movement control order. Right now we are in the conditional movement control order. Eh? So flexibility is given and IPT has to decide the actions to ensure the continuity of the teaching, delivery and assessments. So in Unimas, uh, we are grateful that PPA and CAM have come up with the guidelines of online teaching and learning as well as, as, well as the uh, guidelines for alternative assessment which includes online assessments. So um, the, the program's owners okay, need to ensure the teaching and learning are planned according to these guidelines. Lah. So um, uh, those plans need to be deliberated at the program level, recorded and endorsed by the faculty JK Academy and then brought to, this, brought to Senate. So we have seven remaining weeks to execute our teaching and learning plan. So the SLT for each course need to be revised to capture the online, online learning which replace the traditional learning. So we really must remember in our planning the conditions of our students and make sure they are not burdened with too many synchronous learning. Um, and then uh, the type of assessment has to be well thought of as well. And um, uh, however, all of us as the course owners, we are the ones that really understand our course needs. And I believe we will come up with a suitable online examinations uh, or switching to uh, alternative as uh, assessment if, uh, if needs be. Uh. Right. Um, I know that this is the first time we go totally online and of course it makes us a little bit nervous on the student acceptance and their scores, you know, and learning outcome attainment. So we can use this semester feedback as the input in our, uh, uh, as input for the limitations of next semester. We can also use our formative assessment to gauge the student understanding in our class. And uh, I hope that uh, all programs will have a thorough vetting to look at this online assessment, uh, online or alternative assessments. Again, all documents must be well kept and recorded. So um, at the end of the semester, BGKA with uh, FQMC, Faculty Quality Management Committee, will conduct the usual annual academic audit. However, this year we will specifically look at the evidence um, of teaching, delivery and assessments. So uh, actually the, these measures will be taken to ensure that we are prepared for uh, MQA uh, and professional bodies visit in the future. Um, especially for the programs with uh, provisional accreditation status and the program with full accreditation and need to go for accreditasi pemotohan soon. So the key here is uh, the quality is not compromised. So we have to, I know we are in the exploration uh, uh, masa untuk eksplorasi, but then um, uh, we, we, we try our best and we, uh, we should uh, keep our, all the actions uh, uh, in the document recorded. Uh, for, for our use uh, in the future. That's all. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Dr. Hanuma. If, uh, I think, Terry, Terry, yeah. if I understand, I think, question from Edwin. Uh, so, in regard of the uh, assessment, student not, uh, not submitting assessment and, and have uh, too many excuses which means that a student uh, able to communicate with the lecturers and then he, if they are not submit the assessment uh, without a valid reason, I think uh, we should have uh, consider that if they are not uh, having a valid reason not submitting, is consider it's not done the assessment uh, because I think we are, uh, if we make sure that student already receive the 
material uh, for teaching and also material for assessment itself. So if we make sure that they are already received that uh, assessment and they are not submitting that with uh, time that we're giving to them, uh, considering they are in disadvantaged group, I think probably I think we, we give more time for them. Uh, so that I think uh, if they still not submitting, uh, with uh, uh, not having a good valid reason why they're not submitting, so I think uh, we can also uh, give them uh, appropriately lah, not good marks on that aspect. Yeah. So they if they not submit, that means zero mark. Yeah. So I think uh, I think the student also must be responsible for their teaching learning process, not only the lecturers. Yeah. But if our part already done our job, uh, giving the material, uh, sending the assessment to them, but they're not. Uh, uh, bother to uh, resubmit it uh, without valid reason, but I think there must be a, a, a need, a valid, valid reason why they are not submitting it. So if they are not receiving the assessment, uh, so I think uh, and so on, I think probably that is a valid reason why they are not uh, sending the assessment. Yeah. So I think uh, if you communicate with the student and then they said I think they are receiving the assessment, yeah. So then they are not bothered to submit or it could be they submit through the post uh, and then uh, the the post laju uh, ataupun uh, whatever is it so they misplace the assessment i think these are the things that we need to look into detail uh. i think the university and faculty especially the pra uh, gpt uh, pra uh, siswaza look into the process itself uh, uh, how we can overcome this issue if they happen yeah so probably it's not uh, happened to our student so if they happen also probably I think less than 1%. Yeah. So I think uh, if the student is not responsible on the teaching learning process, I think they deserve uh, the appropriate marks uh, on uh, their attitude on that aspect. Yeah. I think I hope that I uh, answer Edwin's uh, uh, question. Thank you. Yes, I think. Okay. So I think we already way exceed our targeted time. Um, so I, is it okay if we wrap up for this session? Okay, no? I think there is one more question here one on the question. attendance. I think there is one more question from Prof. Spencer on attendance. So more questions from Prof. Spencer on attendance. The MTA. Yeah, so uh, I think... Uh, yeah, it is about the 80% attendance, yeah? <laughs> okay, um, maybe Prof. Atta want to say something about that before I, I uh, add on mm. my comment. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, this situation is different with uh, the ordinary way that how we can calculate the attendance. Yeah? Uh, the process uh, we are doing now uh, a bit different. We're using the online. Uh, and then uh, we know this situation is not common and then uh, <clears throat> our program is not fully online and then we not have very clear uh, guideline on attendance. Uh, even I think with the current situation at some of the courses, for example, the, the attendance in the class of uh, courses uh, in which that their uh, continued assessment is uh, contribute about 60% and then end of assessment, they are contributing only 40%. So we have an argument in Senate and a few uh, JPPA. Yeah? So uh, why should I think uh, we bar the student from uh, uh, I think, uh, key in the marks on a continued assessment? I think even though they are bar from uh, final exam, just only contribute about 40% of the uh, marks. So uh, they are still uh, attending all the assessment in the continuous assessment. If they score about 60%, they are still pass. And while we bar barring the student in the final exam, this is a situation that we face currently. So I think for this current situation, I think uh, the best thing, uh, we not considering the attending uh, to the class is the criteria to bar for uh, attending the exam. But if, for example, they have a valid reason, uh, reasons why they are not attending uh, the class. I think uh, uh, the best thing to overcome this problem, we uh, allow them to sit for the exam, but the result will pending on the investigations. 
uh, if there's any dispute on the uh, attendance of the student. So that is the best way to be in equal, uh, to be fair to the student here. So we try to minimize uh, the repercussions that happen later on because uh, the situation is different. So I think we will bring this to the Senate. I think how we can and overcome the attendance uh, uh, requirement for sitting to the assessment. Uh, hopefully, I think uh, we need to revise this. Uh, but I think uh, uh, the solution will be in after Senate. Uh, I think uh, TD and also uh, Dean can bring this issue to the JPPA and also Senate, uh, this coming Senate, and then uh, we can uh, endorse if there are any uh, uh, new uh, uh, amendment to the uh, academic uh, regulation on this aspect. I believe that I think we uh, need to look back into our uh, regulations uh, for uh, the attendance, uh, specifically for this period of uh, COVID-19. Uh. So, uh, mungkin juga, I think kita akan tambah baik juga lah. I think current situation, we're having a problem with the continuing assessment carry uh, more weightage than uh, final exam. Yeah? So, I think at uh, faculty level, I think you all need to discuss, I think, what is the best uh, method uh, to avoid uh, unnecessary problem when we implement the teaching, learning or assessment uh, in the near future. I, I hope that all faculty uh, need to discuss their uh, difficult level and then uh, give suggestion to JPPA and then we'll discuss in JPPA and the next Senate meeting uh, uh, if this issue of attendance is uh, very critical at the moment. Yeah, add on a bit, uh, yeah. Prof. Yeah. Sila kan, Prof. Uh, uh, this is actually a requirement from uh, KPT yeah, who actually every week I will ask for updates on the online attendance of our students. Okay. So, uh, that is actually a weekly uh, update. Yeah? So basically, uh, we still need to check for some kind of online uh, participation. It may not be the QR code because we may not be doing the synchronous, but it can be like any participation in any of the online activities that you have created. But also knowing that the fact that uh, we may have some disadvantaged groups that may not be able to access uh, Elite or whatever other system that you are using, uh, uh, we well, we should also uh, use that, for instance, if we actually communicate with these students uh, via the WhatsApp over the specific uh, uh, method, uh, uh, on, on that particular week, then basically that is an evidence that there is some participation from your students. Yeah? So unless the students cannot be accessed even via your WhatsApp or Telegram or whatever means, yeah. So these students can only be accessed mungkin secara betulis, yeah. So it means that uh, in this kind of situation, uh, this is a very special case, lah. So I guess I guess that can that can be exempted. But other other than that, uh, there must be some kind of evidence of participation. I think this is also very important because only by having the checking of their online participation, we know that the students are with us because we don't see them face to face. So back to the questions by Dr. Edwin just now eh, about the excuses from the students who actually are uh, towards the end said that, hey, I actually cannot submit in, on time or whatever. So uh, as, a, uh, as a lecturer, I think we are responsible to check the progress from time to time so that we will know whether the reasons given are actually valid or not valid. So if they already told you the, the problem right from the beginning, but senior, uh, it may have some authenticity in, 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 the, in the reason itself, you know. But uh, if they tell you like towards the end, Baru de Muncho, you know, last minute only the person appear in the online, but pre previously never actually talk about anything, no participation and anything, means that there is something, something in some intervention that we need to do in between. Uh, so I think uh, maybe, uh, yeah, so once again, uh, the 80%, I think is not, to me, uh, in my view, it's not the consideration, but the online participation is the consideration. I would like to know that the students are still with us during this process. Uh, yeah. Back to you, Prof. Yeah, thank you, uh, Prof. Chen. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. I think we can, we can wrap up. Maybe okay. We can wrap up. So I think uh, probably I think I can uh, uh, wrap up on uh, my part there. Yeah? So uh, thank you very much for the, all academicians that have been able to join this uh, webpack even though I think I have uh, a difficulty time uh, log in, log out uh, on the webpack. But I think uh, uh, the most important is the uh, our outcome uh, 
I think uh, hope that I think uh, all of us play a role as a lecturer and scholar, uh, and then uh, our responsibility to uh, make sure that a student uh, interested to us to uh, receive whatever I think teaching learning uh, that we planned previously, and then we must be uh, flexible on uh, planning uh, whatever I think uh, conditions, uh, and then be a uh, future uh, lectures is that we are skillful not only in face face learning but also uh, online learning that's all from me i think uh, thank you very much for all of you all stay with me uh, more than number two hours here uh, by now okay thank you very much that is from me i give back to terry yeah okay. before we end this session i would like to thank all our panelists today the variety of professor dr ahmad Sarasit, professor dr chen chen Dr. Rohana Safawi and Dr. Hanuma Uje for giving useful advice and thoughts on how to prepare for our Minimas Academy for online teaching.